Hello guys, welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. I am Damar and I'm here with a brand new heme tutorial video. So in today's video, we're going to basically look on how your red blood cells are destroyed. All right, so your red blood cell, they have a lifespan of about 120 days. All right, so this may vary based on the types of cells you have. For example, in a sickle cell patient, their lifespan is greatly reduced. All right, so it's less than 120 days. The time that the red blood cells spend or their lifespan is dependent on the environment that they are in. So if it's a hostile environment or they are extracellular influencing, which is affecting it such as oxidative stress, you can find that these red blood cells will be broken down much sooner. All right. So remember early on in the iron metabolism, we said that red blood cells is important because it recycles 95% of the iron that your body needs. All right. And then the next 5% you get from food, which is about one milligram a day. All right, so now we're just going to get into the meat of the matter. So we're going to look on the process of how these red blood cells are broken down. This is a very important process. All right, so red blood cells are tagged, all red blood cells, and then they are sent to the reticular endothelial system where there is a particular enzyme that is present, especially in the spleen. All right, so the spleen is important for the breakdown right and this enzyme is called the heme oxygenase enzyme so the heme oxygenase enzyme as the name suggests it is working on the heme component of hemoglobin because remember that red blood cells contain hemoglobin so the heme oxygenase is breaking the heme from the globin protein molecule so the heme oxygenase works on heme and it basically um, breaks it down into a compound that is called biliverdin, right? So that's the first step in the destruction of the red blood cell. Now this biliverdin is actually reduced, right? And it requires the biliverdin reductase enzyme, all right? So the reductase, biliverdin reductase, and that converts it to bilirubin, right? Bilirubin. All right, so this bilirubin is actually insoluble and it's called unconjugated bilirubin. All right, so this bilirubin, it is insoluble, so it cannot be excreted. Now, in order for bilirubin to be excreted, it has to be conjugated, and this occurs in the liver. Now, once you have the unconjugated bilirubin, it is binded to albumin, all right? Remember, albumin is the main protein carrier of the blood. Majority of the substances are binded to albumin once they are insoluble, all right? So the albumin binds to the bilirubin and it basically brings it to the liver, all right? So once it is at the liver, right the liver cells are called what hepatocytes so hepato is referring to liver so the cells are hepatocytes all right sites mean cells now once it goes to the liver the albumin basically releases the bilirubin right which attaches to the hepatocytes and a compound right or a protein called ligandin is actually binding now to your unconjugated bilirubin. Now, once you have ligandin binding to it, it will actually allow it to pass the cytoplasm and enter the smooth ER. Sorry, smooth ER, endoplasmic reticulum. Now, once it goes to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it is actually conjugated right and this requires the udgt enzyme all right uridine diphosphate gluronyl transferase right and now you form the conjugated bilirubin all right so recap 
You start with the Billy Verdin, it was reduced to bilirubin, which is unconjugated and insoluble. It binds to albumin in the blood so that it can be transported because it's insoluble. And then it goes to the liver where it is taken up by the hepatocytes. Ligandin is a protein present there with, which carries it from the cytoplasm to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum where the enzyme UDGT, uridine, diphosphate, gluronyl, transferase, converts it to con conjugated bilirubin or bilirubin dichloronide, digloronide, right? So now we have the conjugated bilirubin. It is soluble, it's ready to excrete, right? So it actively crosses the cell membrane into the biochemicaline, right? And from the biochemicaline into the gallbladder. Now, once it is there, it is secreted into the intestine, all right? So most of the intestine bacteria proteases will actually break down um, this bilirubin because the bilirubin is basically colorless but when there is action by these bacteria that are present in the intestine it actually gives it a yellow color and this is responsible for the color of your feces as well as the urine color that you get all right so when it's um, under a reaction by the bacteria proteases it actually forms urobilogen all right, lure bilogen. All right, and this now is excreted into the feces as stercobilogen. Stercobilogen, right, which is 90% of the bilirubin actually goes towards your feces, right? Some are reabsorbed, and this occurs in your ileum or your colon. And when this reabsorption occurs, it goes back into the circulation. And from the circulation, it actually goes to your kidneys. And once it goes to your kidney, it will be excreted as urobilinogen, right? And that is responsible for giving your urine that yellow color, all right? Some that is reabsorbed in the ileum or the colon, a very small amount, can be actually resent to the liver um, for processing again. All right, so this is the last part of the pathway. So the conjugated bilirubin crosses the cell membrane actively by ATP into the bile caniculi to the gallbladder where it is secreted into the intestine. Now the intestine has bacteria proteases which actually works on this bilirubin which was colorless to form the yellow urobilogen, right? And this that is formed, 90% of it actually goes to form your feces, stercobilogen, while next 10% is reabsorbed by the ileum and colon, goes back into your circulation system, a small amount goes to the liver, while the rest of it actually goes to the kidney where it forms urobilinogen sorry and that gives the urine its yellow color all right so in today's video we look on the destruction of red blood cells in your reticular endothelial system the formation of the insoluble unconjugated bilirubin which may be increased in sickle cell anemia right and other condition where you have hemolysis okay and then now we look on the formation of conjugated bilirubin in the liver all right and from conjugated bilirubin we look on the formation of stercobilogen which is for feces and gives it its pigment and urobilinogen which forms your urine all right so that's it for this video see you in the next one goodbye